Okay guys, so today we are gonna be solving an integral from the 2017 MIT integration B, which is pretty funny because this is not even the competition itself, it is literally the, qualif the qualifiers, so <laughs> should be that, 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 that has to be tough, yeah? So this, an integral between negative infinity up to infinity of e to the power of negative x squared minus 5x minus 3 dx, I had to read it out loud because I just didn't really kind of remember <laughs> what the x value was. Okay, so how are we supposed to do it? First of all, this really looks like the Gaussian integral, I mean, doesn't it? I've already done two videos on, I've already made, I've already recorded and edited <laughs> two videos about the Gaussian integral, so if you're interested in it, I have a version of it when I solve it using polars and without using polars, you know, all that stuff. So I I will just kind of assume that you've already watched them and that you, you know, know what the Gaussian integral is and that you know that, you know, spoiler alert, <laughs> is equal to the square root of pi and stuff like this. And I'm just going to use it here in this video. If you don't know it, then, you know, just go on and check out those previous videos. So let's get straight to the problem itself. First of all, I would like to denote this integral as something I, I just like to do with is it helps me to you know keep keep the track of when I'm at with the problem yeah so now how can we rewrite our integral so first of all I would like to get rid of this negative three right over here just to you know, kind of make this all simpler I, I can just you know take it out of the integral because this equivalent is just saying that I multiply this entire integral by e to the power of negative three I can just you know get it out of the integral itself let me just do it so I will be equal to e to the negative third power multiplied by the integral between negative infinity up to infinity of e to the power of negative two times x squared minus negative uh, minus negative yeah minus five times x that's gonna be with respect to x so what I, would, what I would really like to do here in this problem is kind of just get this exponent right here to be in the form of, you know, something squared. Let's just say some kind of a u squared so that I could mm, just go on and make a u sub there and hopefully solve it like the goals and integrals. So, you know, let's go on and do it. Well, how can I get this exponent here to be some kind of a square? Well, I could use... It's not even a method. I could just complete the square, you know, yeah. Let me just go on and take out this negative 2 out of the out of the exponent there. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write this entire thing as e to the negative 3 times the integral between negative infinity up to infinity of negative infinity up to infinity of e to the negative 2 multiplied by x squared and then plus 5 over 2 and then 5 over a 2. Lovely. So how can we complete the square in this situation? I forgot about the dx there. Well, hmm. Kind of just noticed that uh, if I had x plus 5 all over 2 and I just squared it, I'd get x squared plus um, 2 times... No, it would be 2 multiplied by a... Oh, shit. I, know, I, I should have put... 5 over 4 there, yeah? yeah? So 2 times x times 5 over 4, and then plus 25 all over 16. So I'd get is equal to x squared plus double x. No, a is going to be just 5 over 2 multiplied by an x, and then plus 25 over 16. Quite lovely. Yeah, so I can just kind of go on and mm, write my integral using what I've just achieved here. Yeah, so I'm going to write it as e to the negative third power times integral between negative infinity, negative infinity up to infinity of e to the power of negative 2. And I'm just going to mm, kind of write this parenthesis expression as x plus 5 over 4 to the power of 2 but by doing that I just kind of added to its value this 16 over no, 25 over 16 that I've got right over here so I have to subtract it but well note that I'm multiplying everything by a negative 2 so I just kind of pretty much have to ha I, I just have to add it yeah, so 2 I have to add 2 times 25 over 16 which is 25 over and 8, and I have to take all of that stuff, dx. Lovely. No, I forgot the square there. Lovely. But now, well, once again, I can just take out this exponent there. It's just equivalent to saying that I'm multiplying the integrand by e to the 
25 over 8. So I'm just going to do it. Mm, that's going to be all nicely equal to e to the negative 3 and then plus 25 over 6, uh, sorry, 25 over an 8, uh, multiplied by the integral between negative infinity up to infinity of, once again, what, what was it? It was e to the negative 2 multiplied by x plus 5 over 4 all squared nicely, and that was dx. Now, kind of simplifying this exponent right there, it's just negative 24 over 8 plus 25 over 8. And we can just write this thing as e to the power of just the positive 1 over 8. And I'm going to kind of slide this guy to the left so it's all matching, touching and nice. Lovely. So what I'd like to do now is just kind of make a use up there and we'll use the fact that I've got this x plus 5 over 4 squared in the power of my e. So well, it's a great idea to just go on and now make a use sum that would look something like this or maybe I, yeah, I just put an arrow there. So it's going to be a u sub that says that x plus 5 over 4 is going to be equal to my u and so well pretty much just dx is going to be equal to the du that really changes here and then what's going to happen next and then my boundaries well if x is negative infinity if x is negative infinity then well pretty much u is also negative infinity and then if x is positive infinity u is just positive infinity plus 5 over 4 is still positive infinity, nothing really changes here. We've got a bounce, we've got a sub, and we can just apply it pretty neatly. So let's go on and do it. So what we'll get is the integral, or maybe I will just put the arrow once again there. So we're going to get the integral, or rather e to the a 1 over 8 power, 1 over 8 power, but the negative infinity and infinity of e to the negative 2u squared, u squared right there, and it's gonna be du, and now finally this looks like the Gaussian, so how are we supposed to evaluate it? I'm gonna kind of use the same trick that I would use if I were just evaluating the plain all regular Gaussian, but I'm not really going to be explaining it. If you really want it, then, you know, head out to my 20 minute long video about it. Uh, I'm just going to, first of all, denote it as, I don't know, Shame I have no idea, let's say Y. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, oh, maybe without this E, I'm just going to Mm, you know this integral itself as an as a y so it's gonna be y squared will be equal to what it's gonna be equal to this integral in question between negative infinity and infinity or to e to the power of negative x uh, not x but u squared du squared but now i can just kind of write it as just taking this integral and multiplying it through by itself there is no problem in doing that no i wanted to paste it not copy it twice yeah, now it's better, so it's going to be something like this, but now there's no problem for me to just replace the variable here by anything that is not equal to u, that is, that, you know, anything that is not u, mm, because those two integrals are just going to have a value, just going to have a numerical value, so it doesn't really matter, I'm not going to get a class of functions, you know, like I, like, as if I were trying to do, or rather evaluate an indefinite integral and I were looking for some kind of antiderivative, no, I'm looking for numbers here, I'm just multiplying two numbers by themselves, I don't really care about how those mm, variables are called, so I'm just going to change this u to some t maybe, yes, yeah, so this is going to be my t. I was supposed not, not to explain it too much, but I guess, yeah, that, 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 that's how it's going to go, yeah? And now, what I can do is just kind of use the... Uh, kind of like a theorem that looks like the distributive law of algebra, yeah, and combine those two integrals into a single double integral here. So two, two integrals make up a single double integral of e to the negative 2 times u squared and then plus t squared is going to be all du dt. And what I can do now is just kind of use polar coordinates. I mean, just a perfect place for that. Yeah, so I'm just going to go on and plug myself u being equal to, let's say, our sine of theta and t 
t being equal to r cosine of theta r is going to be cosine r cosine of theta yeah and then you know or maybe i will go uh, around polar coordinates for a small moment so whenever we have the coordinates in the regular cartesian plane we've got the y and x plane or maybe the u and t plane as we've got right here in our problem and what we do by the a point is kind of just make an instruction on how to get to that point yeah so this point is going to be one and one which states that we have to go one in the positive x direction and one upwards in order to get there whenever we have um, some kind of point denoted in the polar coordinate system what we do by denoting it let me maybe denote a point right over here is going to be pi on um, no it's going to be square root of two and pi over four going to be pi over 4 what we really do is we oh, there's the r what we really do is we first of all specify the length by which we have to travel towards the positive direction on the horizontal axis and then we specify the angle by which we have to rotate that path we walked by um, counter crock counterclockwise moving from the horizontal axis which is the theta value and so what we actually want to represent by this negative infinity up to infinity and negative infinity up to infinity is that we would like to cover the entire plane so how do we cover the entire plane in the polar coordinate system well we first of all cover all of the values of r so from zero up to infinity and then we just cover all of the values of theta from zero up to two pi and so we can just write those bounds of integration as as the integral from zero to double pi and from zero up to infinity of e to the negative two r squared and now is the fun part i have to add an additional r then multiply by an r through the the r the theta i'm not gonna be explaining why this so there is a video on my channel is called integral for my friend I, I i i suppose so there is a nice explanation of why you have to add that r there the r the theta and now we can just kind of nicely evaluate this guy there the anti-derivative of this thing is just going to be uh shipman negative uh, one half r squared uh, negative negative one uh negative one half e to the negative two r squared stuff like this and then we're just gonna plug in the bounds and then you know we're gonna get some numerical value and then just plug up that pi and what we actually will end up with is just pi over two and now well if we know that this was equal to our y but squared then we know that y itself is equal to the square root of two and if y is equal to the square root of two guys we know that this integral in question there is equal to e to the power of one over eight multiplied by the square root of pi over two and this is lovely hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one